When you come to trading, your goal is to make money and improve your opportunities and quality of life, isn't it? You know that you don't know how to trade. There's not much formal education in most educational systems. And you come to this trading business as when a sick person goes to a doctor to get a diagnosis. Because that person doesn't know what illness he or she has. He or she goes to an expert in medicine. Likewise, when a person has a leak or a pipe breaks in the house, the person calls a plumber who is an expert in plumbing to repair what he cannot do for himself because he doesn't know how to do it. So in trading, you are supposed to trust someone who is supposed to be an expert on the subject. And you trust that this person like the doctor or the plumber will solve what you do not know. To teach you to observe the charts in certain ways, he knows in the present and in the past to make favorable predictions in the future. And here's where the problem of ideology destroys dreams and reduces the odds of success of those who as new traders are not aware that there are experts such as in medicine, chemistry, construction, and plumbing. But these experts have in common something. They have experience in things that do not move, that are static. A doctor will always have a heart with which to deal, to lungs, to eyes. The lawyer will have the same constitution and federal laws. The plumber and locksmith always will have the same mechanisms that come to know with practice and experience. They are true experts, but in trading, we are dealing with something that is constantly moving, whose causes and effects cannot be verified, and whose future is unknown, and whose past, due to the lack of information, is practically invented with a narrative. Then, the people who are called experts, what are they really experts about? To make money, do you have to be like these experts? Do the so-called experts really have an advantage or knowledge that you do not have? Let's see a recent example when the expertise failed. This video is not intended to support an individual, nor is with the intention to politicize. I do not care if you support it or not support it or like or dislike Donald Trump. This video is to expose those who are considered experts. I want you to open your mind so you notice and realize how it is that an expert simply fails to predict what was going to happen and how the ego believing that they know what the past means, reading data, ends up exploding in their faces. So it's really fascinating because you put the, the chance of Donald Trump or Ben Carson actually getting the GOP nomination, you put it around 5%. Maybe about 5%. So there are a couple things to think about. One is that if you look back at history, you've never seen candidates like Donald Trump, certainly, or Ben Carson win a party nomination. I mean, there's always someone like Donald Trump who runs, who has absolutely no chance of winning, uh, and who is well known. I mean, he's famous for being famous. He may be good in business, but he's not going to be president. Out of all the more than 100 people who have run for president in this modern era, Donald Trump beats them all. Donald Trump has the highest disapproval ratings. We're going to see very clearly after tonight that Donald Trump has no chance of ever getting the delegates he needs to be the nominee. Which Republican candidate has the best chance of winning the general election? Of the declared ones right now, Donald Trump. <laughs> So right now we have Hillary's about a 75 or an 80 percent favorite. We have different versions yeah, of the forecast you can look at. Paul has Hillary Clinton up by double digits nationally, 12 points, 50 to 38, four-way race. Clinton leading in Florida, Clinton leading in North Carolina, Clinton leading in Ohio, Clinton leading in Nevada. I could go on and on and on. Uh, I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president. And so right now, Mr. Trump, to answer your call for political honesty, I just want to say you're not going to be president, all right? It's been fun. It's been great. I love you. 
Blood! Blood! But come on! Come on, buddy! We have a major projection right now. Donald Trump will take Ohio. That's the end of projects. Donald Trump will carry the state of Florida. Huge win for Donald Trump. Donald Trump, while we project, will win in Kentucky, in Indiana, with its 11 electoral votes. West Virginia, Florida, Tennessee, Mississippi, South Carolina, Alabama, North Dakota, uh, with its three electoral votes, and South Dakota, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana. The state of Montana, North Carolina, Georgia, Iowa, Utah, Wisconsin, Arizona, Kansas with its six electoral votes, Nebraska with its five electoral votes, and Wyoming with its three electoral votes. I do not care what you think or if you supported or did not support Donald Trump, if you like or do not like what he's doing. The intention of this video is that you realize that being an expert and appearing on television and having a space when you give your opinions of the past and the future of what you think is logical or illogical, good or bad, of what is going to happen or won't, that does not take away human fallibility as far as prediction. Do you realize that regarding future events and individual actions, that you do not know, that you cannot see, nor predict, nor control, there's no such thing as past experience. And although you might have a statistical data and formulas, individual action will always change the results. The example in the video had to do with political issues where at the end of the day, those who decided that Trump won were not experts, past data, history, surveys, but individual actions that together eventually changed all that was supposed to happen. These individual actions cannot be formulated and this is a problem with which all of us face. Although only a few are aware of it and others, although conscious about it, do not accept it or disregard it as important. What is the use of history, data, formulas based on past data, projections to a very distant future, correlations, if today is a different day from yesterday, the amount of money transacted is different and intentions which cannot be measured or formulated can be totally different from last week or yesterday. The owners of this business have access to the information which in the present they use to their advantage to make favorable decisions as any business will do. Then can you become an expert in things that are always in constant change or have to do with the future? What do you think? The prediction is one of those things that give pleasure and entertain. Imagine that you are in a conversation with an acquaintance and you are talking about another person and you say, his girlfriend is going to leave him in a month. If the girlfriend does not leave him, no one is going to re-emphasize it because being right or wrong is not the main objective. The point is that you believe that he is not worthy of her and the prediction is only a way to improve your judgment with a pleasant vision of a bitter fate for him. Unless you are putting money on the table, nothing is at stake but your reputation regarding the affairs of the heart. If the month goes by and they are still together, the deadline of when she leaves him can be extended without penalty. She will leave him, believe me, I know, it's a matter of time. They end up marrying. And you say, huh, funny things happen sometimes. You never know. But still, you do not recognize that you are wrong. Most likely you say, that marriage will fail. Or you will simply say that you were wrong because of a very low probability of that happening. Philip Tedlock made a study for 20 years that you can read in this book, where it was shown that people who appear as experts in television, which are the most mentioned in articles of newspapers and magazines, which advise governments and businesses and participate in discussion boards are not better than the rest of us as far as prediction. When they are wrong in their predictions, they are rarely held accountable and rarely admit it. 
and insists that it was only a very low margin of error or the event that happened was very improbable that they were almost right or were wrong for the right reasons is the same repertory of justification something external was the cause of the error the accuracy of an expert's predictions actually has an inverse relationship to his or her self-confidence or in own people who read events in the newspaper regularly can guess what is likely to happen as accurate as a specialist the same newspaper site Tedlock found that specialists are not significantly more reliable than those who are not specialists in guessing what is going to happen in the sector that both specialists and non-specialists study. Tedlock found that in areas where it was a question of predictions, the belief that knowing more is better got discredited. The study found that knowing more actually makes a person less reliable. The problem we have as human beings is that we treat our ideas and beliefs as objects and fall in love with them and care for them. We do not like being in the wrong. In an experiment at Yale on University, a rat was put into a T-shaped labyrinth. The food was either placed on the right or left of the T-shaped labyrinth in a random sequence such that after a long time, the food was on the left side 60% of the time and on the right side 40% of the time. Neither the students nor the rat were told these frequencies, of course. The students were asked to predict which side of the T the food will appear each time. The rat eventually found out that the food was on the left side more times than on the right side and therefore almost always went to the left. 60% of the time. On the other hand, the students started looking for left and right patterns and finished only being right 52% of the time. The right not having a reputation did not feel sorry for being wrong two times out of five. But the students who had a reputation and need to show something started searching for hidden patterns and sequences. They could not cope with 40% error and ended with more than 50% error. The expert ends up suffering from knowing a lot. The more information he considers facts, the more information he has available to enlist by supporting his theories and the more causal chains he can find, the more seductive the narrative becomes. As humans, we tend to discard new information that does not fit with what we already believe. We become harder evaluating the validation of information that degrades the theory that we have than the one that supports it. Also as humans, we tend to see the future as indeterminate and the past as inevitable. If you look at the past, the points connect to Hitler or the fall of the Soviet Union or the attacks of September 11, all connect. If you look to the future, it's a lot of scattered points many potential causal chains leading to many possible outcomes. We have no idea how the invasion of a country is going to take place, what new technologies are going to appear. After the invasion or the launch of the new technology that changes the way we live, we can persuade ourselves to the idea that we knew and it was clear. When you are trading, does it happen to you that you change due to the notion of knowing what is going to happen instead of committing to something specific? Do you end up finding more patterns, more stories and more narratives and end up trying something else, implementing new ideas? Do you end up adding more variables to what you see and therefore what can happen in the future? Do you follow people because it seems that they actually see a secret language, causes and effects, connections and correlations that makes them know what happened and what is going to happen? So I want you to understand that at least in this business, those who call themselves or are called experts, although their communication skills might be better than yours, their intellectual knowledge regarding economic data and even though they have been 20 years before you in this business, be aware that when 
It is time to predict seeing variables and finding meaning in this random environment. We all are in the same boat. I am not attacking at any particular person, but the idea that is easily accepted, but that in reality does not have any logic. Then what is the key? That you learn to think for yourself, that you train your mind to not think in biased ways or deterministic ways, that you eliminate all variables based on secondhand information, which creates myths and beliefs. What happens when you do not learn to think for yourself? You fall easily into ideologies, and when you fall into ideologies, you refrain from developing your own judgment, and you favor the points of view that you are given without questioning them. Succumbing to an ideology is to put our brains on autopilot, because ideology pre-orders reactions. If this or that pattern appears, this is how you have to react. This level was broken, then this is what is going to happen. If the X or Y oscillator indicator gave you a U turn, enter and place 20 pips a stop and wait for this other indicator to change color, etc. For the believer, this deterministic and simplistic ideological way becomes a Bible of the market, provides the answers, conditions to those answers, and gives an explanation to complex questions that fit everybody. Despite the conviction and the appearance of the depth of knowledge with which adherence to an ideology speak, they are simply that, adherence to an idea to which the majority say yes without questioning it. Why will we worry about thinking for ourselves when the experts provide all the answers? Why will be the purpose of examining the facts and the effectiveness of the popular approach if automatically we assume that it is the way to success. The reason for this video is that you are more aware of the true environment that surrounds you and that you do not surrender without being aware to an expert and allow the popular approach that causes the majority to lose predetermined your points of view conditioning you and making you believe that your responsibility to think differently, to simplify, to personalize and develop a character of your own can be delegated to the simplicity of symbols, indicators and theories. Do you want to be an intellectual loser or a winner who knows that he or she doesn't know what is going on? What we are going to be looking and talking about is the consistency and frequency of this moment I will be showing you. Think about it for a moment. Consider when you are trying to find many variables and waiting for a lot of things to align in order to take action, while this moment that I'm going to show you, if you start to pay attention, gives you consistency and frequency. When is this moment? When the U.S. stock market opens at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we observe here in a 15-minute chart from 9.30 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. Eastern Time. I want you to observe the frequency and consistency of the movement or ranges that price develops after this moment. Price goes up, stays there some time, then goes below this same area. And from there it stays ours even the next day it stays below the same area that is to say the whole range was of 18 pips as you can see in the upper left corner of the screen the price movement above that area was of 33 pips more of what that area measures and then towards the south it moved 80 pips the next day the stock market opens at the same time 9 30 a.m then it goes above this area which measures 16 pips and price went up 44 pips not only for the rest of the day but also the next day and the maximum of movement was of 65 pips next day 9 30 a.m the range or area measures 16 pips and went down 29 pips in fact when we extend the range it extends 77 pips but you still have the same range measurement which is 16 pips. 9.30, that day, the stock market opens. Again, you have a range of 14 pips 
and there is an expansion of 46 pips. The next day, 9.30 a.m., the stock market opens, and this day did not have a lot of expansion, but the risk or area was 13 pips. But what happens not only during those next hours, but later, eventually, there is an expansion of 27 pips. We can see it changes several times inside that area. Therefore, there are important variables like manipulation, the principle of time, and probabilities. But the most important I want you to understand is the frequency and consistency of movement that happens with or without you and the low risk it provides. 9.30 a.m. Eastern, again, price starts going up, down, up, and down, but eventually it goes to one direction, and in this case fell and the risk was consistent with 14 pips only. Next day, 9.30 a.m., there you can see it, the price goes up, has a range or area of 13 pips and an expansion of 46 pips. The next day, an area of 9 pips and an expansion of 21 pips then later returns and stays pretty much inside that range and then expands again to the north 28 pips but the range continues being 9 pips. Next day 9.30 a.m. there is a range of 7 pips and a movement or expansion of 45 pips and it still continued falling the next day. The maximum was 73 pips with a range of only 7 pips. Next day you have a range of 10 pips and a first expansion of 14 pips and then another of 56 pips even the next day continued going up here we see again the moment the stock market opens you get a range of 19 pips and an expansion of 27 pips and more the next day even 65 pips next day 9 30 a.m you have a range of 10 pips and an expansion of 34 pips 9.30, a first expansion of 16 pips, the range is of 15 pips and an expansion for the day of 29 pips, and the next day continued to that direction even 89 pips. The next day, here is again the US stock market opening. If we extend the range, we can see the price gets stuck in that range, but eventually what happens? gets out and not only got out for few pips but many pips. Therefore, your ranges give you an average of 10 pips, 13 pips, 15 pips, 20 pips the largest ones, but you have expansions of 40 pips, 60 pips, 100 pips or more. Do you see it? Today, you get a range of 21 pips and an expansion of 79 pips. Aristotle spoke of virtue and excellence. For example, courage is between cowardice on one side and recklessness on the other. The generosity that is admired must be far from waste and moderation so that it is of real use. But where is the line? That is the difficult part. Each one of us must find the middle point because if we do not find that line in the middle, that is to say that balance, we run the risk of going to one of the extremes that cause the problems. For that reason, being excellent in something, it's hard. The ambition without limits is easy. Anyone can put the foot on the accelerator with brute force. At the same time, Complacency is also easy since it's a question of removing the foot from the accelerator, from the gas. So what is difficult is to apply the right amount of pressure on the gas at the right time, in the right way, for the right amount of time, in the right car that is going at the right direction, that is difficult. For that reason, trading at the right moment, according to your lifestyle with the appropriate risk according to your risk acceptance with the right amount of pips according to the frequency with the right amount of times according to the size of your account with the right risk reward ratio knowing your personal goals in other words being able to personalize a specific rules of trading is a difficult thing that line in the middle for each individual this is why trading is difficult because it is mostly mental. Most people think black and white. That is, 
about extremes. The crowd think in black and white and search for ways and combinations that they assume they just have to obey and the money is going to arrive just like that. The wisdom of thinking for yourself is more difficult to convey and develop but is the most durable and in our case as retail trader the most profitable but you have to train your brain in the video of the charts that i presented was with the intention of helping you to see the consistency and frequency of that moment without narratives beliefs or justifications because otherwise you tend to try to see an integrate many variables and trying to get several things aligned to take actions while this moment if you continue observing it gives you consistency frequency and amplitude but although you detect a frequency and consistency it still takes work effort focus determination and commitment to find the balance that for you is the best to exploit that consistency and frequency that is the difficult part it is not if the price moves or not or if it is good or not if it goes with the trend or not that is subjectivity and that is the reason why you will have thousands of opinions what really matters most is the frequency and consistency with which that specific moment moves trading is a skill and a skill is developed with consistency and frequency these two will always be better than duration and knowledge the key in an advanced training is that by getting rid of all the popular wisdom, your trading rules become balanced and customized for you and no one else. These are based on unconditional processes to you, me, or anyone who is called an expert. Since you discover by doing that in trading in order to make money, you do not need to follow or do many things at the same time or see many variables and become an expert in random things that you do not control but to becoming excellent at doing one single thing based on something that is already repetitive by itself and when you find that repetitiveness you have to strive to reach that personal balance that is only yours and no one else and can be copied and won't work the same for someone else but it takes work, effort, patience, determination, focus, dedication, commitment, and practice, which is 95% of trading, and the most important. Do you think that the market will reward you without deserving it? Remember, in trading, there are no experts of the future. In trading with logic, we are experts not of the future or the past, but experts on simplifying trading technically so that any individual develops a high sense of consciousness maturation when working with constant uncertainty and risk mind flexibility adaptability and those productive habits that are much more important than the strategy that is used will you continue to follow recipes will you seek outside what you have to change inside will you free yourself mentally to better know yourself so you just follow price this is luis morelos and remember trade with logos trade with logic until next time